It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It's a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings, not only America's number one rated sportsbook app, but how about the DFS during these glorious playoff weekends? We're still daily all the way through the Super Bowl, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And tomorrow, we're going to get to a bunch of emails for the first time, maybe even have a special guest that's still up in the air a little bit. We could just break down the national championship game, although we will be doing that on the College Draft Podcast with Emory Hunt tomorrow. You'll find out everything you need to know about the national championship game, who won, who lost, maybe more importantly, how the top prospects fared in that battle between Ohio State and Alabama. New week means new winners. We'll have a spread the word winner on Friday. Easiest contest I'm aware of. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. Bry and intern Casey are at Ross Tucker Pod. That's where we post the clips of the show. If you just retweet or like or reply to any of them on Twitter or anything on Instagram or even Facebook.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, you are automatically eligible to win a signed picture, a signed football card, or one of these awesome press passes I showed on Friday's version of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, I believe, on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Speaking of that, we will have a cameo style shout out winner later in the week. Just subscribe to the YouTube page, comment on any of the videos you're automatically entered to get a cameo style shout out that people pay for all the time. You can just get it for free and I'll give a shout out to whoever you want, your buddy for their birthday or your fantasy league. I don't care. You tell me I'll do it. Sponsor confirmation email winner as well. By the way, I, I got an email. I think it was Jill. Thomas Sion or Thomas Sion. I got to look at it again. Anyway, I butchered her last name for sure on Friday. I'll look it up and I'll nail it at some point this week. We do have a new patron over the weekend. Love it. Keep them coming. Patreon.com slash RT Media. That is Paul Scott. That's where you can get all of our even money bets in written form, our Friday picks, our press box food grades. I'll be back in Buffalo this week, Saturday night, tell you all about their press box food. And then we've got the power rankings, of course, although that's over now. Tomorrow will be our first power ranking last Tuesday. But then you get some surprises on Tuesday, which are usually pretty cool. Other than that, it's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, Ross, your first ever super wild card weekend. Was it everything you hoped it would be? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, I, I it's almost now, Brian, like I almost can't remember what it was like before Super Wild Card Weekend. You know, it just to have triple headers rather than double headers. It's just awesome. It ups the ante. Really, anytime there is a standalone NFL game, it usually feels like such a cool shared experience with that second screen of social media, you know, Twitter, whatever. It, it's awesome. Then you make it a uh, win or go home game. You have good teams involved. I thought it was glorious. I, I thought it was glorious. Now, look, the, the Saints-Bears game kind of stunk. Thank goodness, Bry. Thank goodness that the Saints-Bears game was the Nickelodeon one because that was by far far the most boring game the least entertaining game so i watched a decent amount of the game with my daughters on the nickelodeon channel i'm buddies with nate burleson and look i wanted to see what it was all about i wanted to be able to have a shared experience with my daughters see if they enjoyed it you know they don't really love watching football but there was enough other stuff in the Nickelodeon thing, like when they got touched down the slime and the, the fan, you know, the SpongeBob fans or all that stuff, enough like graphics that it could keep their attention. I would say, Bri, for, I don't know, two or three times longer than they normally do, right? If they usually only want to watch it for like 
five, 10 minutes. And they're like, all right, dad, we want to do something else, which is cool. They were able to watch it for like 20 to 30 minutes. So I, I guess I would say for Viacom and the NFL, you know, Viacom owns Nickelodeon, mission accomplished, right? I mean, you've got people that otherwise wouldn't have watched the game that watched it for longer than they otherwise would have. And there's something cool about the shared experience for a father with their children, in my case, my daughters, being able to watch it. I, I say, I say huge success. I say, I say mission accomplished. Can you imagine what it would have been like if it was like an entertaining back and forth affair where there was a lot of touchdowns, a lot of slime, a lot of entertaining plays to actually talk about? It wasn't quite that way. But they made it, you know, they made it eventful. They're talking about TikTok, which my daughters know what that is. So they're like listening. There was a young lady, Gabrielle Neva, no idea who that is. I'm sure she's like uh, a social media Nickelodeon legend or something. They, they, they were into it. They, they, kind of, they kind of enjoyed it. So I say big win for the NFL with the Nickelodeon thing. And really, Bri, let's be honest, big win for the NFL with these triple headers. I mean, I can't wait to see what the ratings were like, but it sure as heck felt like a lot of people were watching. And you add two more, like, three-and-a-half-hour windows there. That is so valuable for those networks. And that's just, I mean, every commercial, I can't even imagine what those companies are paying. So it was awesome. It, it was it was really, really awesome. I loved it. Love the triple header. In terms of things that sort of stood out to me, I mentioned the Nickelodeon thing. You know, honestly, at this point, I wonder, I, I'm just going to say this, Bri. I think at some point they're going to have eight teams in the playoffs. They're going to have like quadruple headers Saturday and Sunday, and nobody gets a bye. I don't know when that happens, but I think in our lifetime they're going to do it. I think the argument is going to be, well, the number one seed's too important, blah, blah, blah. We all know why they'd be doing it. They'd be doing it because at that point, they want the money. And I don't blame them. I mean, I've said it before. You know how much money it is to have two extra playoff games, right? So you essentially have four teams, you know, play one more game. It's a lot of money going into the kitty. A lot of money going into the pot of the, that gets divided with the revenue share for the players. So I'm I'm all for it. I really am. Now we could debate whether or not it's really the best thing for the NFL moving forward. I'm not really sure, you know, not having the buy for the second seed was really the best thing in terms of competitiveness during the regular season, right? Because the Bills pulled their people at halftime. Neither the Bills nor the Steelers cared that much about the two seed. That would not have been the case had there been a buy. Steelers and Bills would have gone all out against the Dolphins and the Browns. And by the way, the Steelers might have beat the Browns last week, which would have mean they wouldn't have gotten their arses handed to them last night. It all goes together. It, it all goes together. A couple other things that stood out to me. I cannot begin. Like, I almost get choked up. My eyes almost start to fill up. I cannot begin to tell you how happy I am for Browns and Bills fans. I mean, neither franchise had won a playoff game since the mid-90s. Are you freaking kidding me? The mid-90s? 25 years? You're talking about Browns and Bills fans in their 30s that have no recollection of a playoff victory. You got to be kidding me. And I played for both of those teams very br briefly for the Browns, much longer for the Bills. But still, I mean, I am just absolutely thrilled for the fans of those two teams. They're diehards, they're loyal. You know, those cities, I'm not going to say they've fallen on hard times, but they're not flourishing, as far as I know. Okay. You know, not many of the Rust Belt cities are thrilled. Thrilled for those fans. Thrilled for those people. Hey, if that helps them have a little pickup in their giddy-up in their step this week, let's do it. Amazing. Ama 
I just wish that fans could be at the games to enjoy it. But that was absolutely incredible. You know, I was also, Bri, in the same vein, really rooting hard for Taylor Heineke and John Wolford. You're talking about guys that have started like one game, barely ever played in the NFL, played in these other leagues. Man, I think I said, I think I said this last week. I root for guys like that. It is hard to get a chance in the NFL. It's hard to get a chance. Then it's hard to make a team. Then it's hard to ever actually get a chance to play. I mean, you got to have a lot of things actually go your way to get that opportunity. I felt like I kind of made the most of my opportunity in 2002 with first Washington and then Dallas. And that was what enabled me to get more opportunities in Buffalo. You know, and that's how I was able to carve out a career. When I got my shot, I felt like to some extent I made the most of it. And Heineke absolutely did. We'll get to that. He was awesome. Uh, Walford got hurt. That was a bummer. Sounds like he's okay, though. The only other thing that really jumps out to me, I guess, Brian, well, two things. One is that whole Lamar Jackson playoff narrative, how galactically stupid was that? The guy had lost two playoff games. He was 0 for 2. Big deal. Are we going to have the same energy for the Mitch Trubisky playoff narrative? Because Mitch Trubisky's 0 and 2 in the playoffs now. Hopefully there's a, oh man, Mitch Trubisky can't win a playoff game. I, I mean, give me a break. That's all I'm going to say. Give me an absolute break. Uh, that narrative was stupid. And I, I, I think you guys know me long enough. I put a lot of time into this. I do a multiple podcast pretty much every day. I've got all the, the radio stuff, the games. I don't like when there is, I don't want your life. Do you know what that's from, Brian? Mm -hmm. I don't want your life. No, what is that? Um, Varsity Blues, James Vanderbeek, when his dad just, all, all his dad cares about is winning high school football and Vanderbeek wants to uh, go to Brown. And his dad's like, yeah, but we got. I'm happy about Brown, but and 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 Vanderbeek's like, Dad, I don't want your life. Vanderbeek with an all-time bad Texas accent, all-time bad Texas yep, accent. Not. By the way, his dad was right. You can worry about Brown later. We got this. We got the district playoffs in Texas high school football. All right, Vanderbeek, Dawson, whatever. Um, no idea what his name was in that actual movie. So next. Coaching decisions. Frank Reich, I mean, with the toss on third and goal from the one end of the first half. Hated it. You know that's from, Brian? Nope. 0 for 2. Loved it. Hated it. In living color back in the 90s. Hmm. It was like a, a two snap, two snap and a twist. And then it, they'd be like, hated it. Well, anyway, that's – yeah, bro, you should know that oh, in the 90s you were like in college. You were too cool for – you were too cool for school. Anyway, point being, really didn't like that play call by Frank Reich. There were other times I didn't like his decision to punt or go for it. Vrabel was surprised he punted on fourth and two. Tomlin, surprised he punted on fourth and one. Guys, you, you, you kind of can't stop the other team – you're in their territory, as Steve Fezzik would say on the Even Money podcast, which we will do tomorrow. What do you think the other team wants you to do? What do you think they want you to do? They want you to punt it. They don't want you to go for it. That should say a lot about a lot. Look, to celebrate the playoffs, Bry, DraftKings is giving all new players the chance to bet on any of this weekend's professional football games at 100 to 1 odds. So that means Packers, Rams, Bills, Ravens, where I will be for Westwood 1 in Orchard Park, New York. Then, of course, Browns, Chiefs, Unreal, and Saints, Bucks, Brady, Breeze, Part, Trace. Anyway, you can cash $100. Oh, you have to bet $1 on any football game this weekend. $1. They got a lot of basketball stuff, too. College hoops, NBA, etc. The coolest thing, and the reason why I switched to DraftKings, 
from where I used to be is DraftKings is U.S. based. It's safe, secure, and reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. And remember, even if it's not legal in your state yet, you can still get the app on your phone in almost every state. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS when you sign up to get 100 to 1 odds on any football game this weekend. That's code ROSS for new players. Get a shot at $100 on any football action this weekend. Limited time. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey or PA only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 100 Gambler. Tux Takes. As we always do on a Monday morning, let's get into each of these games individually. We will start with the Buffalo Bills, the aforementioned Buffalo Bills, who won their first playoff game since 1995. 25 years, 10 days, that's 9,132 days total. Uh, after knocking off the Colts, the final 27-24. What were you doing in 95, Brian? Uh, I was waiting tables uh, after graduating college and probably listening to Hootie and the Blowfish. Is that <laughs> there you go i was a junior in high school i had sh i had shot up from six foot 170 to six four two ten we won the league championship in football basketball i was like six four two ten draining threes winking at cheerleaders it was a glorious time bry it, it was a glorious i want to go back take me back uh, anyway, that was 95. Last time Bills won a playoff game. This was a crazy game. So pumped I got to call it. The Colts are moving the ball well. Rivers was throwing it well. But then they got conservative in the red zone too often. I mean, it was run, run, running back screen. So it was 3 nothing. Um, the Bills had some big play passes. Then Allen had a quarterback power for a touchdown. I got to tell you, the, the Colts, I thought, got the better of the action this game. Josh Allen was excellent with the exception of a couple of bad sacks he took in the fourth quarter that could have really hurt the Bills, including the one where he got sacked and fumbled. But the Colts had a season-high 472 yards. They totally dominated time of possession. I mean – the Bills were fortunate. How about like after the Colts get stuffed on the goal line? It was a good goal line stand by the Bills, but still. Third and goal, the toss cracked, and you throw it on fourth down. Your strength of your team is your interior O-line. Run it with Taylor right up the middle, back-to-back -back plays, third and fourth and goal. Awful. Awful, awful. And then right after that, Allen makes a couple crazy throws to Gabriel Davis, who had not one but two terrific sideline reviewable play toe tap catches to get the touchdown. And it was 14 to 10, Brian. And I tweeted at Ross Tucker NFL that the Colts were dominating 10 to 14. Dominating, but losing. Uh, the Bills. Had an impressive uh, drive to start the second half, but they settled for a field goal. Um, Colts had a nice drive answer. Rivers missed a wide open Pittman. Threw it behind him. They had to settle for a field goal, and then he missed. Hey, Rodrigo. He he hit it off the right post. I told you that story before, right, Brian? No, I don't think so. Yeah, they're like Steve Miller band, you know, like Brown Eyed Girl. Hey, no, where'd we go? Close. What's that? Van Morrison, not Steve Miller. Oh, okay, whatever. So uh, I thought my whole life that at the start of that song, they said, hey, Rodrigo. And I was on a boat with my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and wife, and that song came on. And I said, hey, Rodrigo. And my sister-in-law was like, wait, what did, what did you just say? I'm like, hey, Rodrigo. She's like, it's, hey, where did we go? My whole life, I thought it was, hey, Rodrigo, and I would sing it with vim and vigor. Hey, Rodrigo. So Rodrigo missed it. And then Allen throws another great ball to Diggs. Next thing you know, he, he ran right past TJ Carey, 24-10 Bills. But give the Colts credit. They had two quick 
touchdown drives in this in the fourth quarter to keep it close. How about Sean McDermott had an all-time great timeout when uh what's his name? Pascal for the Colts fumbled getting off the ground and they wouldn't overturn it. They wouldn't overturn it. Unbelievable. Fortunately, that was one of those ball don't lie things because there's no way you could have had the Colts win. The guy clearly stood up and the ball was punched out. Clearly. Huge win for Bill's Mafia. I'm going back. I'm coming back. Tuck Stakes. Rams still undefeated under Sean McVay's tenure when leading at halftime. Starting quarterback John Walford exited early with a neck injury. Jared Goff leads Los Angeles to a 30-20 win up in Seattle despite his thumb still not being healed. Next week, Rams at the Packers. It's really interesting because I thought for sure it would be Ravens at Chiefs. You know, I thought the Steelers would beat the Browns. I thought it would be Ravens at Chiefs. And then I also thought it would be Bucks at Packers, Tom Brady at Aaron Rodgers, you know, so there, there's a couple of really good divisional games that I had in mind that aren't going to happen. Kudos to the Rams, man. I mean, you start an AAF guy at quarterback on the road in Seattle against Russell Wilson and you win the game. Kudos. And he got hurt. That was kind of a questionable hit by Jamal Adams. It sounds like Walford's okay. I didn't like how it looked with the neck brace and getting in the ambulance for people that saw that. Aaron Donald was a one-man wrecking crew in this game until he hurt his ribs. They say he'll be okay. Golf was just kind of okay, Bri. They really leaned heavily on Cam Akers. Cam Akers was excellent in this game. And really, you know what happened? The Rams won the trenches on both sides of the ball. Demarius Williams had that great jumping the route on the pick six on the wide receiver screen to give the Rams a 13-3 lead. And the Seahawks never really recovered. Their offense is broken. There's going to be some major changes in Seattle, I would imagine. You can't have a loss like that. I think they just feel like they're stuck. I mean, Russell Wilson took five sacks. He had that ridiculous touchdown pass at DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett had that crazy catch. And they still had to struggle to score 20 points. Both field goal kickers were awesome. The Reed muffed punt for Seattle when it was 23-13, that pretty much sealed it because then golf threw the touchdown pass to Woods. That also sealed that my under on the Even Money podcast wouldn't hit. Not real happy about that on a lot of different levels, but it is what it is. Tuck Stakes. Tom Brady, now the oldest quarterback to throw a postseason touchdown pass. Bucks over the football team, 31-23, and they will face the Saints in the divisional round this weekend. So you didn't get to see, uh, would you say, uh, Rodgers versus Brady, but you'll see two old guys anyway. Yes. Brady was awesome in this game. I mean, he was on point again. Touchdown passes to A.B. and Godwin. Even when he was under pressure by that good Washington front, Brady was still able to get it done. Ronald Jones was injured during pregame warmups, which was weird. He didn't play. Mike Evans did. I could not be happier for that Heineke kid. I mean, that you know, I, I can't. By the way, he needs to get a deal with Heineken. He needs to get a deal with Meineke. Like if I was Heineke's agent, okay, that dude would have endorsement deals this morning with Heineken. And Meineke, okay? I can picture the commercial now. He's drinking a Heineken while he's getting his brakes fixed at Meineke. Is that what Meineke does, brakes, Brian? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's what brakes. What's that? Mufflers, too. Yeah. It would be like even have a Heineken like Heineke at Meineke. Think about that. I just came up, came up with that off the top of my head. Have a Heineken while you wait for your car at Meineke, just like Taylor Heineke. I mean, they, they pay advertising firms like thousands of dollars for that, Bri. I just gave that out for free. You guys can keep that one. Um, he was awesome. Every time, it's weird. Every time it looked like the Bucks were going to pull away, Heineken, Heineke would make up Heineken. Heineke would make a play 
But then every time they did that and Washington answered, Tampa Bay would then answer back. So it was a good game. It was a good game. Heineke made it a good game. Tux takes. As you talked about earlier, Lamar Jackson won his first playoff game. He got his first career win also when trailing by 10 or more points. Ravens beat the Titans 20 to 13. Was not a great game for the Ravens. Was not a great first half, but they showed tremendous resiliency. Being down 10 nothing. Lamar Jackson's first pass maybe was a terrible arm punt to Malcolm Butler. I, I don't know what he was doing there. Uh, the Ravens bogged down in the red zone after Lamar had, had a couple nice passes. They had to settle for a field goal, but they just kept playing. You know, uh, the Titans started out hot with A.J. Brown for a touchdown after three catches, maybe a push-off. Then Ferkser, my Ivy League brother, had a nice drive, uh, but they had to settle for a field goal there. But the Ravens just kept playing. They totally stuffed Derrick Henry. He did nothing. They ate him up. So impressive. So impressed by that Ravens defense. Look, the Titans had four sacks to Lamar Jackson in the first half, but the Ravens marched. Good mix of run and pass on the first drive of the second half. The play of the game, though, was that scramble like 50-yard touchdown by Lamar Jackson to tie it up. He looked so freaking fast on that play. It was insane. I have no idea why Vrabel punted it on fourth and two, none whatsoever. That led to Tucker, my brother from another mother, making a field goal to make it 2013 after a very questionable offensive pass interference call. And then Peters intercepts um, intercepts Ryan Tannehill. I don't know why it wasn't pass interference on Peters for hitting Raymond, but that's another story. Uh, Ravens finished the game off on the ground. They stomp on the logo after that pick which was kind of cool. Kind of cool after what the Titans had did. Uh, to the victor, go the spoils. Tux takes. Drew Brees finished 28-39 for 265 yards and two touchdowns. He leads the Saints into the divisional round of the playoffs after beating the Bears 21-9. Chicago only 1-10 on third down conversions. So, yeah, I mean, they were terrible. They have to get a new quarterback. Like, they got to get a new quarterback. Uh, it was brutal. The Saints, though, have this weird way of letting teams hang around with them. I, I don't know why in the playoffs. Now, they've beaten the Bucks pretty bad twice this year. Can they do it three times? But they let teams hang around. I just don't get it for the life of me. Um, they had that typical touchdown drive with Kamara running, Breeze passing for a touchdown, but that was it. Give a lot of credit to the Bears' defense. They were up to the task all game. You know, Trubisky has an unbelievable throw to Javon Wims on a throwback right through his arms, right through his arm. It should have been a touchdown. should have been a touchdown Bears. Awful. How about when Trubisky just ran out of bounds on like fourth and four? He ran out of bounds two yards short, short of the first down. Like, Mitch, what are you doing? What, what, what are you doing? His awareness is not good. Um, you know, then they, they got the Bears to jump twice on fourth downs. They get Eddie Jackson to jump fourth and three, Taysom Hill. Just awful Eddie Jackson. Breeze throws like a sky hook touchdown to, um, to Latavius Murray after that to go up 14-3. Bears couldn't move the ball or score at all until it was too late, very late in the game when they did it. Uh, Jimmy Graham made an incredible touchdown late. Final score, 21-9. The Bears can go and hibernate for the season. You know where they should hibernate for the winter, Bri? On purple a purple mattress. mattress. Very comfortable purple mattress. A very comfortable purple mattress. Look, I have felt this stuff. It is awesome. It's the only comfort innovation that provides total pressure relief, which I need for my back, absolute airflow, and ergonomic support. Ergonomic or ergonomic? Ergonomic, I think. I don't know why I said ergonomic. Look, every purple product ships free, 
and is delivered right to your door, if you're not completely satisfied, you can return your product for a full refund, which is amazing. It's the purple grid. You got to at least get a sample of the purple grid. They've had proprietary technology for over 15 years. You can see it. You can feel it. I have felt it in my hands. And I love that you can try it risk-free. Experience the purple grid and you'll sleep like never before. Go to purple.com slash Ross10 and use promo code Ross10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash Ross10, promo code Ross10, for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply. Tuck Stakes. Cleveland Browns jump out to a 28-0 first quarter lead, eventually go on to win 48-37 over the Steelers, who, I guess, by the way, finally get their bye week next week. Uh, beating them for the second consecutive week, Cleveland now heads to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And I think they should get Denzel Ward back. They should get Joel Batonio back, I would imagine. I guess it depends if those guys have symptoms or not. Kevin Stefanski. I mean, they were missing their head coach. Their offensive play caller, their best offensive lineman, their best defensive back, and they destroyed the Steelers. That was – I was tweeting during the game, Bri, at Ross Tucker NFL. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. I mean, that was – Pouncey snaps the ball over Big Ben's head on the first play, and the Browns recover it for a touchdown. I'm just not sure I've ever – like, worst start I've ever seen – and frankly, it just felt like they never really recovered from that. Almost like that Broncos Seahawks Super Bowl 2012 or whatever that was. It, it just it just got the, the Steelers in a funk. Then the next drive, Ben throws a bad interception um, at midfield, trying to do too much. Mayfield throws it to Jarvis Landry. He's in for a touchdown. Catch and run touchdown. By the way. It's almost like how can you bring back Odell Beckham Jr. at that rate? I mean, they 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 really do appear to be better without him. Um, then Pouncey on third and short gets absolutely stoned by Larry Ogan Joby. What a terrible game for Pouncey, which led to another Browns touchdown as Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt they were running over around and through the Steelers. I mean, now the Conklin injury could be big if he can't play. Really big. Then Ben throws another interception on a high pass over the middle. Kareem Hunt scored another touchdown. 28 nothing. You said it, Brian. 28 nothing in the first quarter. Gustin gets another tipped interception early. But that, that one, the Browns actually – there was three interceptions. The Browns' offense was unstoppable. Steelers finally got on the board late first half after really what was – an impressive run by James Conner on fourth and one near the goal line. But then the Browns answered. Yeah, I thought, okay, 28-7, here we go. But then the Browns answered right back. Baker Mayfield to Hooper for the touchdown. Incredible, absolutely incredible two-minute drill for the Browns. You know, um, Ben chucked it around in the second half, threw for over 500 yards, put up 37 points. Not enough. Browns in the fourth quarter got that touchdown drive and another interception to put it away. I mentioned earlier what I thought was Tomlin's questionable decision to punt early in the fourth quarter on fourth and one. You just can't do that. And very, very, very happy for Browns fans. What a weird season for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Weird, weird, weird. That'll do it. What an awesome podcast. So fun. Such a fun weekend. Tomorrow, we will have a uh what do we call it like a tuck heads tuesday where i answer a bunch of your email questions so take advantage of some of our sponsors send it to me ross at ross tucker.com i'm gonna get to a bunch of email questions tomorrow there will also be some tucks takes and stuff to get to for sure i don't know what we'll do for the big show as of yet then we'll also have the college draft podcast breaking down tonight's national championship game you're gonna want to listen to that one tomorrow and even money podcast divisional round style other than that shout outs are in order for 
Pizza Boy Brewing. I got two six packs and a bunch of pizza Saturday night from there. Sportaculture, SteakhouseSports.com, Vision Comics with an X. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.